Hello and welcome. Today we shall go into the details of something that is almost a part of our daily lives. We are talking about newspapers that land at our houses every morning and brings us news from all parts of the world. The types of newspapers, contents and characteristics is the topic of today's program. But before we start, let me introduce you to today's subject expert. Our subject expert is Shikha Gandhi and I am Amrita Ghosh Kumar. At the completion of today's program, you will be able to understand the history of newspapers and be aware of the different types of newspapers and their characteristics. First, let us understand what a newspaper is. A newspaper, sometimes called just a paper, is a periodical publication containing news as well as other informative articles and advertising. Newspapers are usually printed on newsprint, but quite a few of them are published online as well, as in print. They are typically published daily or weekly. The online versions of newspapers are called online newspapers or news sites. Let us look at the history of newspapers. Newspapers come in different styles, shapes and types, but they share a common history. An understanding of the origins and the historical background of the newspaper industry will help you appreciate their role in the modern society better. The history of newspapers starts with the invention of the Gutenberg Press in Germany by Johannes Gutenberg in 1440. The printing press changed the way news and information was developed and passed on for generations to come. The first printed forerunners of the newspaper appeared in Germany in the late 1400s in the form of news pamphlets or broadsides, often highly sensationalized in content. Some of the most famous of these reports, the atrocities against Germans in Transylvania, perpetrated by a sadistic count named Vlad Seep Strakul, who became the Count Dracula of later folklore. You may call this the first pop press story and it had a great impact on the rest of the world. The first newspaper was printed in England. The newspaper began circulating in the 17th century, but newspapers had to wait till the 19th century to become more common. This was because in early 1765, stamp duty was charged on newspapers which made them expensive. Then in 1855, this duty was abolished and so newspapers became cheaper and hence more popular. It was technological advancements which made the modern newspaper possible. Now let us take a look at the timeline of newspapers. Fifteen hundred and fifty six. First monthly newspaper, Notizi Scrit, published in Venice. Sixteen hundred and five. First printed newspaper, published weekly in Antwerp, called Relation. Sixteen hundred and thirty one. The first French newspaper, published the Gazette. Sixteen hundred and forty five. Postdoc Inrik Tinengar is published in Sweden and is still being published today making it the world's oldest newspaper. 1690. The first newspaper is published in America. Public Occurrences. 1702. The first English language daily newspaper is published called the Daily Courant. 1704. Considered the world's first journalist, Daniel Defoe, publishes the Review. 1830, number of newspapers published in the US is 715. 1831, the famous abolitionist newspaper, The Liberator, is first published by William Lloyd Garrison. 
1833, the New York Sun newspaper costs one cent, the beginning of the penny press. 1844, the first newspaper published in Thailand. 1856, the first full-page newspaper ad is published in the New York Ledger. Machines now mechanically fold newspapers. 1864, William James Carlton of J. Walter Thompson Company begins selling advertising space in newspapers. The J. Walter Thompson Company is the longest-running American advertising agency. 1871, the first newspaper published in Japan, the daily Yokohama Menichi Shimbun. 1873, the first illustrated daily newspaper published in New York. 1877, the Washington Post newspaper first publishes with a circulation of 10,000 and a cost of 3 cents per paper. 1885, newspapers are delivered daily by train. 1887, the San Francisco Examiner published. 1903, the first tabloid-style newspaper, The Daily Mirror, is published. 1933, a war breaks out between the newspaper and radio industries. American newspapers try to force the Associated Press to terminate news service to radio stations. 1967, newspapers use digital production processes and begin using computers for operations. 1971, the use of offset presses becomes common. 2007, there are now 1,456 daily newspapers in the United States alone, selling 55 million copies a day. 2009, this was the worst year in decades as far as advertising revenues for newspapers were concerned. However, newspapers are moving into online internet versions. A very important landmark for newspapers was then becoming for profit ventures. Started with lofty ideals of fairness and truth, journalism could not resist becoming prey to man's greed. Sensationalism established a stranglehold on news with a focus on crime, gossip, human interest stories, with the use of larger, colourful pictures and attention-grabbing headlines by the late 19th century also known as yellow journalism. Sensational stories as we know are meant to anger or excite the public rather than to inform. We shall be talking more about this in detail in the later part of the program. In 1766, a British editor, William Bowles, offered the first ever paper to his fellow countrymen in Calcutta and helped establish a printing press. Bowles was against the East India Company government. So after two years of establishing his press, he was sent back to England by the company. James Hickey published the Bengal Gazette, a four-page newspaper. Hickey too was against the company government and published internal news of the employees of the company. Soon the government withdrew the postage facility for his paper as a fallout of news against them. He still managed to circulate his paper by appointing 20 men to deliver it. Once he published news against the chief missionary of the main church, Zan Zakaria. Zakaria complained to the government for that fake news and filed a defamation petition against Hickey. Hickey was fined Rs 500 and sentenced to four months imprisonment resulting in the death of the paper. In November 1781, India Gazette was also introduced. It was pro-government and against Hickey. Newspapers of that time were in English and the news only related to British activity in India. British, the local population was not the target, but the company feared that these Indian papers could get to England and may defame the company in England. The vernacular press had a big role to play in India's fight for freedom. The Indian language press pioneers were the Sirampur missionaries 
with Samachar Darpan and Raja Ram Mohan Roy with his Persian newspaper Miratul Akbar. The Bombay Samachar, a Gujarati newspaper, appeared in 1822, almost a decade before daily vernacular papers like the Mumbai Vartaman, Jane Jamshed and the Bombay Darpan began publication. The year of the mutiny was important as it was in this year that the British clamped down censorship on the press. During the next two decades, the Times of India, the Pioneer and the Madras Mail and the Amrit Bazar Patrika came into existence. All except the last edited by Englishmen and serving the interests of English educated readers. The Amrit Bazar Patrika and Kesari, started by Lokmanya Tilak, gained a reputation for opposing government attempts to suppress nationalist aspirations and fire the flame of rebellion against the British rule. Now there are numerous newspapers in India. In mid-2007, there were 62,483 newspapers registered with the Registrars of Newspapers in India or the RNI. The Indian newspaper industry was estimated to be worth Rs 96 billion in 2006. In 2006, the government opened up the news media business to foreign investment and up to 26% of foreign paid-up equity was allowed in news. Henceforth, few international publishers have made huge investments in the Indian news media. The unprecedented growth of the print and electronic news media in our country has given rise to new patterns of media ownership and to unexpected changes in the news values and news formats. We shall be talking in detail about how these affect the content of mainstream newspapers later in the program. But now let's move to another area where newspapers show a lot of diversity that is in their types characteristics and the kind of content that they carry. There are several different types of newspapers. This includes papers that cover international news along with local news and current events. You also have newspapers that only list classifieds while others list editorial and opinion pieces as well. Newspapers can also be differentiated according to the type of news they carry. For example, there are the national newspapers, which contain national and international news but focus on news relating to a specific area of the country. Examples are the Times of India, the Hindu in the country and the Times in the UK. These contain some national and international news, but focus on fairly local news topics in detail, usually based around towns and cities. Examples are Bristol Evening Post in the UK. There are a wide number of newspaper types and formats, but three in particular tend to be used above all other. These are Broadsheet, Berliner and the Tabloid. These types actually refer to particular print formats and are now firmly wedded or identified with a particular kind of content. Like broadsheets are the quality or serious press and the tabloid is the popular or sensational press. Broadsheets are also associated with high quality journalism. They cover serious issues like politics and are published on larger newsprint. The Times of India, the Indian Express and the Asian Age are all examples, while Midday, the Afternoon Dispatch and Courier and Today are examples of tabloid newspapers in the country. A third format is termed the Berliner and it is popular in Europe. Le Monde, The Guardian and La Stampa are some North American daily newspapers like The Journal and Courier. HD Media's business daily, Mint, published in partnership with the Wall Street Journal, uses the Berliner format. The Berliner is a little narrower and shorter than a broadsheet and slightly taller and wider than a tabloid. Without any particular association with the quality of news reporting in the format, 
some broadsheet newspapers in the UK have looked to the Berliner format as a happy medium that allows for the portability of a tabloid format newspaper without the negative connotations about its content. A prominent example is the Guardian, which began printing in Berliner format in 2005 after competing broadsheet newspapers had switched to the tabloid or compact format. This offered the same portability advantages as the tabloid format while allowing for some unique design differences to distinguish the paper. The tabloid format is the smallest newspaper format and also the one with the repetition for the worst journalism. Tabloid newspapers have very poor journalistic repetitions all over the world. So much so that several broadsheet quality newspapers which have decided to take on a tabloid size have preferred to call their format compact in order to avoid the many negative connotations of tabloid newspapers. Now we shall talk in detail about the two prominent types of newspapers called the tabloid and broadsheet newspapers. Traditionally, newspapers have been split between tabloids and broadsheets. Broadsheets being the larger, more serious paper that you had to fold to read and tabloids, the smaller size newspaper that dabbled in sensationalizing news and were almost borderline defamatory. The gap between tabloids and broadsheets is a wide one. They look different, they contain different news, they have a different style of writing and they aim to attract different readers. Tabloid newspapers are smaller than a broadsheet. They cover gossip or scandalous stories popularly about public figures. Other topics covered in tabloids are usually related to crime and scandal. The idea here is to attract the readers through sensationalization and by printing a large number of colored pictures. If asked to summarize their prominent style features, we would say that tabloids are the popular press. Their advertising is based at the lower socio-economic groups. They favor bold layouts, which means color on the masthead, very bold typeface, easy to read, and large, colorful, and dramatic pictures. The headlines are usually in bold, catchy, use a lot of alliteration to catch the interest of the reader. They also usually have fewer words with a sprinkling of action verbs. Some editors jokingly call this style of reportage as find the story for the picture, journalism. Size is the main difference that one notices. A tabloid is usually much smaller, about 11 inch into 17 inch, and a broadsheet about 11.75 inch and 21.5 inch. Other differences are the language is informal and colloquial, shorter articles, more pictures, less in depth reportage, puns and jokes in headlines. More focus on human interest stories, celebrity gossip and sleaze. Focus on gimmicks like free coupons, etc. to attract readers. Tabloid journalism is frequently termed yellow journalism, primarily because of its tendency to sensationalize and trivialize events, issues and people. Now let us look at the origin of yellow journalism. Yellow journalism finds its roots in the circulation battles between two of the most powerful media barons in America in the 19th century. The battle was between Joseph Pulitzer's New York World and William Randolph Hearst's New York Journal. And it peaked by 1898 and it was in this year that the term yellow journalism became very popular. This term was coined by Irvin Wardman of New York Press. Wardman used the term yellow kid journalism, referring to a comic strip that ran in both the competing newspapers. Yellow journalism was the forerunner of tabloids as well as tabloid journalism, which as we know, thrived on sensationalizing and trivializing news. It is also the forerunner of the type of infotainment being churned out by news channels as well as newspapers today in the name of news.
The tabloid newspapers contain celebrity gossip and news that is juicy and exciting to read, especially by a middle class readership. Tabloids are usually glossier with a lot more colour and pictures. They also tend to focus more on less serious news like fashion, entertainment, gossip and adultery, sexual escapades of the rich and famous and those in power. Tabloids also favour an easy to read language and style and they generally are also an easy read keeping in mind their target readers and prefer entertaining stories in favour of more serious reportage done for example in the Hindu a broadsheet. The basic characteristics of broadsheet newspapers are a broadsheet focuses more on serious news, politics, government, business and industry. Broadsheets are the quality and serious press. Not only are they different from tabloids in look but in character too. Let's take a detailed look at these differences. Indeed, there are five prominent differences between the two related to size, content and its coverage length of articles and depth, writing styles, headlines, pictures. Broadsheets are papers with large pages. They are often known as the quality press, being more informative and formal in the manner they convey information and news stories. These appeal to the educated middle to upper class readers. They may also be politically biased. The basic characteristics of these serious newspapers are they represent quality, their target readers are the educated, serious groups, mostly elites, more sophisticated and formal language used in articles, more in-depth stories and a plainer layout and no colour on the front page and less picture, advertising is aimed at the higher socio-economic groups, longer articles, more detailed, serious headlines, more focus on politics, international news, reviews of high culture, example opera, art exhibitions, etc. Almost all major newspapers in India are broadsheets. Tabloids are mostly found in small circulation, local or rural papers. Tabloids and broadsheets can also be left-wing or right-wing. Right-wing newspapers uphold traditional Indian values a dislike of political correctness, strong opinions about crime, immigration, etc. Left-wing newspapers carry liberal opinions, are politically correct, showcase modern or trendy ideas like concerns about the environment and global warming, gay issues, etc. How has the role of the newspaper changed throughout history? Has the control or ownership of the newspaper has any influence on its role? Let's turn our attention to these important questions now. In the late 19th and first half of the 20th century, the main newspapers were owned by several press barons. These were rich and status they confirmed and for the influence they gave them in society. Since the World War II, Ownership of newspapers has become concentrated in the hands of a few very large corporations. For example, Rupert Murdoch owns a number of news outlets, both press and TV, all around the world. He owns the 20th Century Fox Studio and 35 television stations that broadcast in USA. He publishes 175 newspapers, including the New York Post. Rupert also owns the Fox Network and 19 other regional sports channels. This means he can help promote ideas and political interests that he approves of and people might not get balanced viewpoints via news. In India too, news media is seeing a high concentration of ownership or monopolies amongst the political and economic elite. So we have industrial houses that own and publish a number of newspapers and magazines such as women's magazines, children's periodicals, business weeklies, science journals and even comics. The Times of India Group or the Bennett Coleman and Company Limited, India's biggest media house has a newspaper. 
Times of India and it also owns a news channel called Times Now. Similarly, Living Media, the publisher of the magazine India Today, also publishes a host of American or European magazines such as Cosmopolitan, Vogue, Men's Health and owns a bouquet of news channels like the Aaj Tak and Headlines Today. According to Chomsky's propaganda model based on news media, the size and profit orientation of the owner of the news media can have a big impact on the news that we receive. Concentration of ownership in the hands of few groups automatically means that they wield much power and this usually results in a narrowing down of the range of opinion and the field of debate. This range is further narrowed when cross-media ownership becomes the norm, like when a newspaper publisher also owns a TV network or radio channel. Now let us study the future of newspapers. The internet has had a great impact on the press. Globally, people are buying fewer newspapers because they can access news online. This is a major challenge for mainstream news media, including the newspaper and TV news alike. Most newspapers have online editions and quite a few newspapers, especially in the West, have stopped printing altogether because of an inability to sustain themselves financially. These are challenging times for the press indeed. But the silver lining is that the Indian newspaper industry has been growing despite the digital onslaught. In today's program, we have attained a basic understanding of the following. History of newspapers, the different types of newspapers and their main characteristics. So keep reading always. See you soon. Goodbye.